Hey there, fellow golf lovers, and welcome back to another episode of Tea Up with Kira. I'm your host, Miss Kira P. Today we have a fascinating topic for you, so grab your clubs, settle into your favorite chair, and let's tee off into the episode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tea Up with Kira. I have an amazing guest. Her name is Linda Harto. I have heard so many great stories about you, Linda, from your lovely PR person, Sally. So please explain to everybody, Sal- or Linda, what you do and how you became a part of it. Well, <laughs> it was a long journey, but about uh, almost 30 years ago, I got a call from Augusta National and they liked my landscapes and asked me if I could do a a painting of a golf hole. And I said, sure. (laughs) (laughs) So who knew, you know, that would start a whole career in golf landscape, but it did. That was in 1984. And I uh, have been painting golf courses ever since. (laughs) That is so cool that the first (laughs) golf course was Augusta. So how did Augusta find you to do a landscaping of a golf hole? And which golf hole is it? Well, of course, the 13th hole was the first (laughs) one I did. Uh, But yeah, I had had moved here from Chicago in 1980, and I was exhibiting in a gallery on Hilton Head, and they saw some of my landscapes there. And they liked them, so they called me and asked if I could do that. So I got started with them, and I did my very first prints for the 85 Masters. I had never printed my work before, so that's been a whole nother journey of learning, (laughs) is printing processes. But uh, it got me started, and other clubs started calling me right away because I was working for Augusta. And uh, I started doing the U.S. Open in 1990 and did 25 U.S. Opens. <laughs> and then I did uh, also started the uh, British Open Championship Series in 1992. And that was, uh, I did nine of those. That That is so cool. So... How, my question now is, how did you start getting into painting and what was your original painting experience and then all the way up to now painting golf landscapings? Well, I, I, I think I was born with it. (laughs) I was uh, (laughs) doing art before I knew it was art. (laughs) And by the age of six, uh, I realized that not everybody did that. So I realized I was an artist. So that was the rest of my life plotted out right there. (laughs) But uh, I was going to say, I unfortunately did not pass art in high school. (laughs) I, I flunked out. Unfortunately, I was not good at art, but I commend you for being a golf artist. I think that is amazing. What is, one of your favorite memories of going to these locations and some of your highlights besides your first one being Augusta? Well, that was pretty good right there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I went to uh, Scotland for the first time in in 1988 after I uh, had gone to a PGA show in 1988 where I met up with the Scottish gentleman who was a dealer in golf antiques and he brought me over to Scotland and showed me all the old courses. And actually he took me to St. Andrews and dumped me in a bed and breakfast and left me there for a week. (laughs) Which was the perfect way to get to know St. Andrews and the course. So uh, that was pretty epic. (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds pretty nice to be just dropped off at bed and breakfast at St. Andrews I mean for a week but I will see you later in a week <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was terrific and when he came back to pick me up um he was a RNA member 
So he he also knew the night watchman at uh, the club. So he took me over there for a midnight tour of the RNA. <laughs> That's so cool. How was that? Well, it was pretty special, really. I mean, I went and saw everything. And of course, he's a historian. So he told me all the history. And, and uh, you know, the women weren't allowed in the clubhouse then at all, at all. So mm -hmm. this was a very special tour. <laughs> that That is amazing in itself. So Linda, do you golf? I am an avid watcher. Okay. Played when I was young. My father was an avid golfer, and he insisted I take golf lessons and play nine holes. And if I didn't like it, I could quit. So. <laughs> and then you just took up painting instead. Well, I was already doing that. I was, <laughs> I was riding, riding horses, and I was painting, and I didn't need another discipline. <laughs> You were disciplined enough doing both of those things. I mean, so I was acutely aware of golf being an incredible discipline. And, you know, this was not an easy game. <laughs> this ball did not go where I visualized it. <laughs> so, so my question for you, I know your, your father probably instilled a lot of advice and tips what are some of those tips and advice that your father and you have learned from try from learning the game? Well, I think the game teaches you so much. That well, it's discipline <laughs> first and foremost. <laughs> Anyone who does a discipline is going to gain from that, and I think the more young people get involved with that, then, I mean, it's incredibly important for their development and understanding how the world works, basically, because <laughs> you literally go through every emotion in the world when you're on the golf course, and controlling that and being a, a, a controlled person in that situation is invaluable for life. For doing I, I I totally agree a hundred percent. So we see all of these lovely pictures behind you. Can you explain to the viewers what's going on behind you? Uh, well, actually that is my um, proofing area. So when I get a painting, when I do a painting, I send it to the, for a digital capture and then he does a print and then they come back here and I set up the painting next to the print and mark it up. You know, it's a it's a proofing area. We have the same lights as the printer, and the studio is through that door and in another room, but where I paint. But this is my office print place and where I do manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the process that goes on behind the scenes before? during and after when you're painting what is your pro and like how much time does it go into prep painting and the the well, post-production first, <laughs> first i have to get all the reference material and that entails going to the course and experiencing it picking the views living with those views for several days or longer uh, getting the exact lighting that's that's exciting to me and shows off the whole the way I want it to be showed off and uh, also you know you have to also understand how the golfer sees it and how the club you know which holes the club likes the best which ones are the most strategic I mean it's just a big decision and I poll members usually the pro you know I, I like to get the flavor of the whole course you know seeing the whole thing getting a feeling for it and then narrowing it down according to what I'm hearing from the pro and different members and you know knowing the history like if you're at Marion you want to know the history <laughs> what went on there <laughs> so 
you know, it's it's all part of the process. And then once I get all the photo reference, then I can bring everything back here and basically view all the pictures until I get an idea in my mind what I want to do. And that can take weeks, just that process. Just it's it's just like assimilating every detail. And then I I see the painting before I ever put the first stroke on the canvas. That's awesome that you can visualize what you want. I commend you to that. I mean, that's amazing in itself. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it, it, it's sometimes it's a pretty long process. I, I know my husband used to, you know, he'd peek in the studio and you started yet? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Weeks and I have pictures all over the place and spread out and you know, I just, I just have to get that fixed in my head before I start. So. So do you listen, do you listen to music while you paint or is there a certain process before <laughs> when you're in the studio and you're about to paint, is there something that you always do? Um, mostly it's, I watch the golf channel. <laughs> <laughs> I have golf tournaments on in the background and, you know, stuff like that. I, I you know, it's like, whatever. It it's like background happen. noise. Yeah, it, it, it's not intrusive. And sometimes you can just mute it and it's like, fine. <laughs> that So what is some of the feedback from the locations that you've painted from those, the guests, the club? What are what's some of the great feedback that you've heard from these locations? Oh well, great. I mean, listen, I'll, of all the subjects I've ever painted in my life, and I've painted a lot of different ones, uh, the golf people are so appreciative of what I do, and that just it just <laughs> it just makes you feel so good, you know. And I I, I went to the merchandise you know, for U.S. Open for 25 years. So I experienced firsthand the people. I was working at Augusta National in the pro shop there for 20 some years as well. So I get direct feedback and it's it's always pretty darn good. That, <laughs> so that just makes you feel really good, really worthwhile doing it, you know. That is so cool that you get that feedback, that instant feedback from yeah. the golf community, from the golf enthusiasts mm -hmm. what is what are some of the perceptions that you would like the the public the non-golfers to realize about the golf community I mean there's so many you know stereotypical golf ideas and what are some of those that you think people should know really know about the golf community what is it really like as an insider well, I, you know, I think it all has to do with the integrity of the game and what that teaches you. Most of the people that you encounter in that business, I'm not saying there aren't a few, you know, they don't yeah. have to, but, but most all the people are incredibly honest, good hearted people. I mean, you just don't fit in if you're you're not that kind of person in most of the golf community. I, I, I totally that. agree. <laughs> and it, it's like, um, I, it has to do with just the game itself because of its rules and its, its way it teaches you the, uh, the integrity of it it's all a, a part of it and, it and it changes you as a person. I, tol I <laughs> totally agree. So my next question is, if you were playing in a pro-am or you were playing at a tournament, what would be your first tea walk-up song and why? My what? My first what? So like when you go to the first tea, you, sometimes there's music playing. What would be your, your song and why? <laughs> well... <laughs> That's a good question because I don't relate music to golf. Yeah. <laughs> so I have well, to, well, you know, I don't think, I think of golf as nature sounds. Right. 
I don't think of it in terms of music unless unless it was uh, ethereal music. So yeah. that's what you would you would be interested in is ethereal music. Okay. Awesome. Because I think, you know, golf is a very metaphysical brain uh, experience. I don't think of it as dancing or music or rhythm music. You know, I just don't even, that doesn't even compute to me. Uh, yeah. No, I totally agree. I feel there's something amazing about the nature and the sounds of nature because we don't really get to experience it as much as we should to right. reconnect with the the earth exactly i i just don't understand people with earphones and and listening i mean you know maybe they're trying to block out something but why would you block that out that experience <laughs> i don't get it but i know exactly. even pros do that when they're practicing so yes and i i totally agree and then linda what is what are you up to in the future? What are your What are you planning on doing the next couple of months that you can tell our listeners and viewers? Ah, uh, well, I am. Um, I I have stopped doing tournament golf uh, in 2014, but now I'm doing mostly private commissions for individuals and clubs. So I'll do a package deal for a club. Um. And right now I have a couple of proposals out, but you know, right now I'm not, I'm sort of waiting on those proposals. I don't, I don't really paint anything until I have an agreement. <laughs> yeah. That that's so the what is your some of if you had to choose, what is your favorite kind of painting? Is it the tournament painting? Is it the course painting? Is it the architecture of the clubhouse? Which one? gets you excited the most when you get to when when you paint well I think it's definitely just the landscape that's my first love and that's kind of my where I came from before I went to golf landscape and fortunately golf landscape is in some of the most beautiful places in the world and varied it's not all the same kind of landscape I wouldn't want to paint one course forever um, I really like the Scottish and Irish courses because uh, they're so natural and, you know, that really appeals to me. But always the primary element is the lighting, I think. If there's a clubhouse that's worth doing, I try to incorporate it. If it's famous, you know, or or but if it's not pretty or modern or, you know, I'll do something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then last question for you, Linda, what yeah. would you like to tell my viewers and our, my listeners that are a fan of golf? What would you like to tell them? I would love for them to go to my website. What's, what's your website? <laughs> it's just harto.com. Very simple. H-A-R-T-O-U-G-H.com. And there is a lot on that website. There's paintings in progress. There's art shows, of a lot of paintings that aren't even in print, some of the ones I've done. And there's also, we have um, an email sign up and we run contests all the time. Uh, pick the winner of the tournaments. So if you pick Aww. the winner, you get a free print. That is so cool. I love that. Like, so you find that on the website then? Yeah, you have to sign up for the email to get the pick the winner email. And then you just send in your guess. And a lot of times there's a lot of winners of one, you know, if it's somebody really <laughs> famous. And and so we draw from the, all the people that made the right guess and then we send them a print. That is so cool. And then I know that you... We're the founder of a of an organization. What is that organization, and what do they do? Well, that was the uh, that is the Academy of Golf Art, and it was formed in two thousand three, and that was uh, in a, just an organization of people um, that work in the golf industry in the art side. That could be photography. Uh, painting, whatever, sculpture. 
Um, and it was an effort to bring those folks together and have a forum. And also maybe uh, we do shows at different museums. And it's a way of connecting with the collectors of golf and people interested in the, we have uh, an association with the Morris Museum of Art in Augusta, Georgia, and we've had shows there during the masters and it's, 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 you know, that's what it's for kind of just getting, getting out there and, and, and showing the world basically that it's a viable genre of fine art. I love that. So how many members do you have? Do you guys have? Uh, we have about 15 right now. Uh, we just recently got a new president and she's got lots of great plans for growing the organization. I, I sort of founded it, but I'm like, okay, now, now you can <laughs> take it. <laughs> oh, I have the energy I had, you know, 30 years ago or whatever. <laughs> to do all that I, I'm, I'm enjoying being here on spring island and painting when i feel like it <laughs> i love that i love that so much so linda thank you so much for coming on to you up with kira i truly appreciate it for all of our viewers and listeners if you have any questions please reach out to linda please reach out to myself if you have any questions please go check out her artwork it is beautiful and i'm so jealous that you have that artistic painting <laughs> along with you got to paint augusta that is an amazing story <laughs> i have so much experience at augusta you wouldn't believe when i first went there there was no merchandising they're just a small little indoor pro shop and now it's like disneyland of golf <laughs> <laughs> i love that and I have seen it from day one to now. So it's quite a, quite a thing. <laughs> that is so cool. And what's, what's some advice that you would give somebody that's interested in painting? I mean, painting's a hard project, a thing to master. What would your advice be for somebody that's interested in painting also? Paint a lot. <laughs> more time you spend on it the better you get <laughs> it does i love see it takes a lot of years and you have to do a lot of work i love that well linda it has been such a treat to get to know you and hear your story it's been so great everybody check out next week's episode of tea up with kira and linda thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to be uh, on as a guest I appreciate it very much. And uh, anytime you'd like to do another one, I'm right here. <laughs> awesome. I know how to get a hold of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right.